We have a current issues panel with us today, a regular feature here on the show. And today we are going to hit a variety of stories, including controversial ad campaigns by fashion houses. We're going to discuss one Ontario hospital network considering, out of desperation, hiring healthcare workers who did not receive the COVID shots. And speaking of COVID, we'll cover a data breach of Ontarians' information from the COVID booking line. Lots to discuss. And join me now to unpack it all is political commentator Brock Stevenson and Elliot Hughes, senior advisor at Summa Strategies. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, always fun to have this panel because we cover so many interesting things. Let's talk about this Ontario hospital that's considering, again, operative word considering, hiring back uh, unvaccinated healthcare workers. And to be clear, that's who did not receive the COVID two shots. Uh, maybe we'll start with you, Brock. What are your thoughts on this? Do you think this is a starter? I think the overreach has been a problem throughout the first two years of the corona pandemic in Canada. And I think we've got a challenge uh, throughout the system for the healthcare workers' own well-being. They probably should consider getting their shots, but this is a dilemma that's bigger than them. There's a staffing shortage that's been going on for years due to poor planning, shortage of spaces in universities throughout the country. And this is the result you get. Uh, corona just compounds the challenge. Uh, Elliot, what do you think? Do you think those who refuse to comply with the government's edict, do you think they should be allowed to be hired back? Yeah, I do. I mean, I think we're in a very different place than we were a year and a half, two years ago. Uh, if you put yourself back then, we really didn't have a good sense of, uh, you know, how Corona moved, um, how serious it was. Um, and so we've learned a lot since then. Uh, we've also seen the, the as Brock mentioned, uh, the healthcare system in, in Ontario and Canada, frankly, is in, is in really rough shape. And we need, uh, uh, you know, every hand, every help that we can get. Uh, and so to Brock's point again, obviously for the health and, and safety of those healthcare workers, uh, you know, hopefully they, they decide to, to protect themselves a little bit more and, and use uh, and get some of the shots. If they don't, um, then that's something that they're going to have to take on themselves and, and, and take that risk. But I think any extra set of you know, hands to help out these days to, to sort of backfill some of, the, some of the work these healthcare workers have been doing and, and get some new shifts in there, I think would be very much welcomed by everybody. Well, I'm curious as to how, well, I have perhaps a little bit of an insight. I spoke to um, a parent of one of these healthcare workers who was vaccine mandated out in Ontario. And I, I said I was going to cover this topic today. And she said, well, I don't know if they want to go back. She said, you don't understand. For the first two years, they worked themselves silly, trying, thinking that they were sacrificing, that they're putting themselves in harm's way, working directly in the ICU with these COVID units. And now they feel like they were just cast by the wayside. Do you think, Brock, if these workers were to be rehired or if they were allowed to come back, do you think they will? And if so, what about back pay? I don't think they're getting back pay, but I do think some of them will go back. Some of them clearly are victims of the system where the 10% that didn't get vaccinated were ostracized and pushed to the corner of Canadian society. Uh, the federal government especially pushed them aside. I think that this is part of the challenge. But we, we have a shortage of healthcare personnel and the provinces and the federal government need to work together, step up and find more uh, doctors, nurses, and healthcare workers to fix this problem so that we don't have it this way for the next 15, 20 years. And Elliot, do you think um, this will maybe expand beyond this one southwestern Ontario hospital network? I mention this because we've seen in Saskatchewan, Alberta, Manitoba, Newfoundland, New Brunswick, and the Yukon, they have all lifted the restrictions for healthcare workers. Ontario, again, very, very major populous uh, province, one third of the country lives here. They're, they're not lifting it yet. Neither is Quebec, uh, nor has British Columbia. Uh, do you think Ontario will be the first to lead the way in lifting this policy? I wouldn't be surprised. Um, and, and I think that change is, is probably coming. Um, it, it might be a bit tough for the premier to make that call at the moment. Um, we're probably entering into, you know, a bit of a push um, in terms of, you know, COVID uh, rates and, and, and just general challenges in the medical system and, and I guess there's a question in the, that fine balance for the premier to strike. I do however think that in the spring I think these um, these will continue to kind of roll off and, and provinces like Quebec, Ontario and BC will follow the others. Um, the challenge that we have in the healthcare system in this country 
is too immense uh, and it needs to be tackled. Uh, and we need everybody um, who can, you know, and who wants to participate and be a, you know, part of the system and part of the solution. We, we can't really afford at this point to start sort of pushing those folks to the side. I think we've gotten to a point now uh, where it's it's quite it's quite serious, and and there are bigger issues at play, and more discussions to be had between the provinces and the feds. Uh, but it starts with getting people into those jobs as soon as possible. Welcome back. We're continuing with our current events panel. We have Brock Stevenson and Elliot Hughes. Um, you know, usually when you see fashion ads, uh, usually the big controversy is that, you know, perhaps they use models too thin or too young. It seems that a lot of fashion houses are now, or retailers are now kind of wading into some of the more social issues. One here in Canada, Simons, which is a, a very successful department store based out of Quebec, they featured euthanasia in their recent ad. And it featured a woman who actually had just recently been euthanized, Jennifer Hatch, from British Columbia, and was kind of talking about her, it's kind of her journey. It was beautiful. Like, I have to say, it was a very beautifully artistic um, advertisement, but she chose to have herself killed by doctor-assisted suicide, by, by medical-assisted suicide. Is this appropriate for a fashion housing? Is this the right messaging even, Elliot? I'll let you take the first stab at it. I mean, I, I definitely don't think it is. I think it is kind of pretty pretty bad that they would try to use this very emotional type of story to try and sell more clothing. Um, that said, um, as, as you mentioned, it's a, it's a very artistic and it's a sort of a nicely made ad. And I would assume that the person who was involved in that um, understood why this was being done. And so participated in that in a, you know, sort of in, a, in an open and willing fashion. But uh, I find it a very odd choice and I find it, you know, particularly around an issue that is so contentious at the moment and, and, and is going through some, you know, uh, some growing pains at, at the moment. And it's just a, a very odd choice. Uh, and uh, when I saw that and, and read the article about and saw the news about it, I really shook my head and 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 really had to wonder, you know, this was a, a very poor attempt at trying to stand out in what is becoming, I guess, a crowded a clothing market and, and 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 I just I just couldn't understand what they were doing with it to be honest. Well I mean perhaps they had some foresight because you know we're here talking about it on national television and I've chatted with about half a dozen other people. So you know I you never paid much attention to that store before being here in Ontario, but who knows? Uh, Brock, what are your what is your take on this ad? Was that poor taste? Uh, apparently the woman Jennifer Hatch, she actually intended wanted to live initially. Um, what what is your take on this? First of all, I think the foolish ad campaign achieved its goal. We're talking about it. But secondly, one of the core problems with assisted suicide in Canada is the court forced Parliament uh, to make a decision. Parliament failed to do this. Now, as Elliot mentioned, it's, it's a growing issue and it's a growing pool of Canadians that may be eligible for uh, medically assisted suicide. And the lack of access to health care, lack of access to public services shouldn't be sufficient cause to end a person's life just because they're struggling. There should be supports in society to help people. Yes, I agree. I mean, she mentioned that she it was through a lack of a palliative care, a lack of supports and, and health care. Uh, she had a rare syndrome called Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, connective tissue disorder. Not very many Canadians know about it, but um, very painful to live. And, um, you know, it's it's sad that I guess, you know, coming off our last segment when we we're talking about health care, that our health care system wasn't able to meet her needs. Uh, and again, it, taking the euthanasia component aside, it was a beautifully artistic, very visually beautiful ad. Uh, Totally, I don't think it hit the right. I don't know how one sells clothes featuring euthanasia. I really don't. I really don't. Let's talk about another ad that came out. Uh, Balenciaga, which is a European fashion house. Uh, distastefully, and if we can put up the image, then we will. But they featured children with teddy bears in bondage. Again, you know, one of those what were they thinking kind of things. Elliot, did you catch that ad? I, I didn't look through it um, because I thought it was pretty weird. Um, but again, I think it's it's accomplishing, particularly with I, this. At least I kind of understand a little bit more than the the, the Simon's ad. You know, uh, edge try, a fashion house trying to be edgy, trying to stand out. It's a very competitive landscape. We are talking about it on a current affairs program in Canada. So obviously, this has done something to kind of get that Balenciaga name out there. Most people probably didn't even know what that brand was. 
So, and then immediately they retract, they apologize and they pull back. And so they felt it was probably worth it. This is a brainstorming session gone wrong, or maybe a brainstorming session that's gone very, very right for the brand. Brock, what is your take? I think the real problem is once the ad was condemned, uh, leaders in the fashion industry and Hollywood celebrities were really slow to criticize. Uh, it, it took uh, Kim Kardashian days to speak out. It took other fashion houses days to speak out. And uh, as a result, it sort of shows that the whole industry is complicit in, in sort of pushing the boundaries, endlessly trying to promote itself and sell their product. Well, it's interesting you mentioned, yes, Hollywood and celebrities were slow uh, to come out. You mentioned Kim Kardashian. Again, they, they said, you know, we're going to reevaluate our relationship. It wasn't even really a condemnation. I found that shocking. Uh, you know, the depiction of children associated in any way, shape or form with bondage to me is, is a horrifying as a parent, especially. Uh, well, we'll see how that fares for them. Uh, we're going to cut to commercial break. We'll be right back.